Hello everyone and welcome to another video. If you're stuck at home like I am, you might want to find ways to keep yourself entertained. And if you're looking for ways to do so without breaking the bank, I have something that you might be interested in. This racing wheel from PXN. As of filming, at $105 Canadian dollars, it is the cheapest racing wheel set available on Amazon. But is it worth buying at all or is it just a hundred dollar you waste? Before we have a look at it, please consider subscribing to my channel so I can make more videos. Also, comment down below if you have any suggestions. I've never heard of PXM before, but they claim to be the most professional brand of game devices. They seem to be making racing wheels, game pads as well as joysticks. Anyways, the one I have here is called a V3. In the box, you get the wheel, the pedals, a U-clamp as well as some documentation. First things first, it's funny that they're using an RJ11 telephone cable to connect the pedals to the wheel. Let's look at the wheel first. I've used a Logitech G920 before and compared to that, this one is tiny. The build quality is acceptable at best for the price. It's all plastic and it feels cheap and somewhat flimsy. On top, you have something straight out of 2005. Flames! There are also numbers from 1 to 4 and corresponding LEDs. I checked the user manual and I played with the wheel for a while, but I couldn't figure out what they do. This wheel has a lot of buttons. There are 15 in front and 2 on the back of the wheel. Moreover, there are paddle shifters and a gear lever. If you add all that up, you get 21 buttons in total, which seems very impressive. I mean, the G920 has significantly less buttons. Unfortunately, there's a catch. Moving the shifter forward, pressing the right paddle button, and pressing the RTR2 button all do the same thing. This applies for the left side as well. I can understand why the gear lever and the shifters do the same thing, but not the buttons. In my opinion, they just added the extra buttons to be able to advertise that they have a lot of buttons. Speaking of the gear lever and the paddle shifters, I have to say that they're very poorly made. You can actually see the white plastic underneath the knob and listen to the sound it makes when you actually move the lever. The paddle shifters feel like an afterthought to me. It seems like they ran out of budget and they had to use whatever material they could get. Only this could explain how cheap they look. The wheel itself feels okay though. I think it looks good and they even use non-slippery material where your hands would go. I like the texture of the plastic in the middle too. You have two options to fix it on a table or any flat surface. Either by using the built-in suction cups or by installing the included U-clamps. It would be very smart to have two ways of fixing it on a table if the suction cups actually worked. The problem is, even if there are seven suction cups, there is none on the back. To be fair, they work if you turn the wheel gently, but not for any sudden movements. The U-clamps on the other hand work just fine. The pedals are on a weird angle, but the build quality is okay. It's very light and as a result it's very slippery. It actually has one small trick up its sleeve that makes it less slippery. There's an extension piece that you can use as a footrest and if you do, it doesn't slip. After plugging it into your computer and installing the drivers, you should be ready to go. Quick note, make sure that you don't throw away the user manual, you will need it. You have two main modes, X input and direct input. X input is the standard for Xbox controllers while direct input lets you control more buttons than there are on an Xbox controller. By default, it comes in X input mode. In this mode, when you go to game controller settings, you'll see that there are only 10 buttons aside from the wheel, the pedals and the D-pad. Two buttons are mapped to the Z-axis which is used for acceleration and braking. If you switch the direct input by pressing the home button for 3 seconds, you can use those buttons too. And now, let's try gaming with it. It's a 180 degree steering wheel which is obviously different than a real one. The Logitech G920 for example, is a 900 degree steering wheel. It's fine in older games like Need for Speed Underground 2, and I assume that it would be fine in an arcade racing game too. On the other hand, if you're playing a game like Euro Truck Simulator 2, you'll quickly notice that a slight turn of the wheel means a very large turn in-game. And that is the biggest problem of the wheel. I've seen some wheels on the market where the wheel rotation gets processed as a left or right click, which beats the whole purpose of using a wheel. This wheel fortunately doesn't do that. Same with the pedals, but there's absolutely no difference between half pressing and fully pressing a pedal. I tried to fix it in settings, but unfortunately, it's a hardware limitation. I also tried playing Formula 1 2018 with it, but the issue I had in your truck simulator was present here too, only way bigger. It was just impossible to control the car. So, despite all the issues I have with it, do I still recommend this? Actually, yes. The thing is, if you're considering buying a cheap wheel, you're probably not planning on using it a lot or playing competitively. When I got the Logitech G920, I loved it, but then I realized that I wasn't using it a lot and that it wasn't worth the money. This cheap wheel, despite all its issues, is still better than playing with a keyboard. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider liking this video, checking out my other videos, and subscribing to my channel. Take care.